Okay, we have a new setup. If you look in the back, that large shelf is now gone. I have a new shelving system where the comics are, most of them anyway. The wooden box you saw, it's called the vanity, that's over here now. So the iPad is sort of tilted at an angle. We are gonna talk about the Chiefs Super Bowl uh, silver toy shooting. And we know almost nothing about it. And that's the point of this video entirely. Now I'll be 42 in less than a month. Yeah, I know, I'm getting, I'm getting up there. Um. And if you look at the older gangs from 50s, 40s, 70 years ago now, you look at Greece, the outsiders, a lot of these gangs have been fictionalized a little bit. They've been stereotyped a little bit. It's more mythology now. You have the leather jacket, switchblade in the back pocket, the motorcycle. Okay, Irish gangs, Italian gangs, Hispanic gangs, mixed gangs, black gangs, whatever. But these were the gangs one of the three years ago. And some of these guys stay in the gang life, and some of these guys wake up one day and be like, oh shit, my girlfriend's playing, let me get a job now. Now, a lot of these gangs, how would they call a warlord? And if you look at the Italian mafia, the warlord is kind of like a cancellieri, where he's the advisor to the gang leaders. And these warlords would get together and they'd have a problem, whatever their problem was. Someone was on the wrong territory, someone got someone's girlfriend pregnant, whatever the fuck the problem was, you know. Whatever the problem, maybe they would fight over the territory, like, like whoever wins the fight gets this, gets this parking lot. Whoever wins the fight gets this, this shit more. Okay, we'll explain that by fighting it over. Whatever the reason was, these gangs had fights. And the warlords would sit down and discuss what was going to happen at the gang fight. Knives, fists, breast knuckles, bats, whatever they were going to have. And for the most part, the police department, especially the gang intelligence unit, they knew a lot of what was going on. In fact, most of the time, you would see the gang sort of at the meeting with the, with the uh, warlords. And they would lay down the rules. We're going to have a fight. We're going to have this many guys, that many guys. We're going to do this and the other thing. And the sergeant would, let, would lay down the real rules. I don't want any civilians harmed. I don't want... It would be like in a parking lot or a field or, or in the middle of fucking nowhere or 2 o'clock in the morning. It would be a real, real isolated area. I don't want any harm. I don't want any civilians harmed. And it would say flat out, if you get there and there's a guy walking a dog, it's called off. Okay? If the fight is almost over and two little girls come to play hopscotch, it's off. Any civilian come within your range, the fight is off. And the sergeant, whoever the, the, the gang intelligence guy was, he usually had a card to play. I know where the hideout is. Or I know that your cousin is selling drugs. Or I know that you were on probation. Or I know he is this and the other thing. Or I know you got a warrant for that, okay? And basically, if the rules were violated, the entire police department came down on both gangs equally raid the gang hideout, okay? And this was the era where the, the cops were smacking the shit out of the suspects, okay? The cop would put a guy's head to a fucking plate glass window, okay? These were the real hardcore cops, okay? This was back in the day when the cops were feared by the gangs. And the gang leaders would shake hands, they'd shake the cops' hand, and they would have their fight. And make no mistake about it, these fights were very, 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 very brutal. Okay, guys lost teeth, guys had noses broken, guys had jaws broken, they used breast knuckles, they used fucking bats, okay? They were very, very violent gangs. I'm not gonna say they, they, they were little girls, but they, they, were, they were pretty fucking nasty. Now, what would happen is, that would be the end of it. And like they said, if a civilian came in the area, they would run away. They would not hurt a civilian. And no, the cop did not send his nine-year-old daughter in to play fucking jump rope and scare him away. That didn't happen. It wasn't that stupid. But they were told there was no civilians. Okay, you're, you're a gang and you want to kill each other, that's fine. But if you're going to hurt civilians, you're going to have a problem. A real serious problem. And God forbid a civilian got hurt, the entire gang would go to prison for it. Whole gang. Okay? The RICO Act, where if you remember an organized crime syndicate, you can be punished for it. Yeah. Okay? So they, they really, really came on these gangs 
and a lot of this shit wasn't tolerated. And a lot of the gangs had a code of conduct back then. You didn't you didn't beat the shit out of women. You didn't hurt kids. Okay, they had a code of conduct. As, as tough as they were, as much as they wanted to knock each other out, okay, they had a lot of conduct. In fact, I had a professor who was taught an organized crime class. He was a Mount Vernon cop. Mount Vernon is a town right outside, a very small city. My rifle range is there. He was, it's sort of outside of Yonkers, outside of New York City, that area. And the, the uh, professor was a detective at the time. And there was a club, and he saw a million motorcycles there one day. And these guys got the tattoos, the bandanas, the, the, the motorcycle jacket. They're tough guys. He goes over. Let me see your leader. I'm going to talk to your leader for a minute. Okay, cool. Okay, here's how we're going to do this. I'm not going to have a single phone call tonight about nothing that goes on here. Okay. I have, I can hit the alarm and get all of my guys here, or I can ball from New York City, or I can ball from Yonkers. They have what they call the uh, cooperation, which means if there's a really, really serious problem, other towns, other cities will help out. And that goes for the police department and the fire department. Okay? We can't help out. In fact, I, myself, could be in Mount Vernon, off-duty, and there could be a fire, and I could tell the fighter, listen, man, I got my gear in my car. I'll put on my vest and my stop sign, and I'll direct the traffic away from you so you can fight the fire. I can do that, and they'll accept my help. So all police, all fire, all support staff, they will help each other out if there's a problem. So the, the, the professor, the detective, says, listen, if you promise me there's not going to be a single problem tonight, I promise you I will not run any of these um, license plates to any of my databases. Oh, okay. Okay, deal. Shake hands. So there are gangs that as bad as they are, they, they draw the line somewhere. Now, a lot of these, these, these street gangs that you see in the 80s and 90s, even now, obviously, the 21st century, these guys don't give a fuck, okay? They don't care who gets killed, okay? Black old ladies, black babies, okay? These are the guys where, like, example, there was a 13-year-old girl in um, uh, Chicago on Father's Day dancing in front of her parents and a bullet killed her, okay? The same exact day in Chicago, a sure kid got shot and killed because his father was a gang banger, okay? Or... No, I think Terrence Williams mentioned where an 11-year-old girl was targeted while she was washing off her dog. They actually shot her. Another kid was about seven or eight. He was his father was a gang member. His father was in hiding. The gang kidnapped his son, who was like seven years old, marched him down an alley and shot him in the back of the fucking head. Yeah. That didn't happen back then. Back then, you didn't tell, you didn't you didn't do that. You didn't never, ever, ever, no matter what was going on, you never went after the guy's kids. And you never did a fight or a stabbing or a shooting if you knew there were kids around. You didn't do that back then. These guys today, they don't give a fuck. Okay? Now, what most likely happened is there was... I guarantee you these gang members were actual Chief fans. And I guarantee you they were actually at the parade to celebrate the Super Bowl. I guarantee you that. But because they don't give a fuck about you, me, or anybody else, when they're there, oh, that's my enemy, he... Did this to me last week, or that's my enemy. He okay. They saw each other, and when they see each other, the argument breaks up. Fuck you, nigga. Okay. okay, and then when that happens, the guns come out, and they shoot each other. And who gets shot? A forty-two-year-old mother. And Taylor Swift, regardless of politics, Taylor Swift gave that family a lot of money for funeral expenses. And other things. Okay, give her credit there. Even if you don't like her politically, that's fine. I want to mention that. Because that's that's a good, important thing. Her boyfriend. Oh my god, we need more gun control. Now, a couple of Chiefs fans actually tackle one of the suspects, civilians. And then nothing. Nothing. In fact, there was a meme today out from Brigitte Gabriel and a couple other guys. We don't disclose the identities of juveniles. Oh, really? Picture of Kyle Rittenhouse, picture of um, uh, Nicholas Sandman, and a picture of that kid from the Chiefs game, which got the, the war paint on his face and the Chiefs headdress. Yeah, 
Okay, those kids. Yeah, they're on the front. Yeah, you don't you don't disclose names. Yeah, we don't disclose names of minors unless they're white and conservative or white and defend themselves. Oops. So the fact that they did not disclose the names means they're not white. They're not conservative. They didn't have MAGA hats on. Okay, they weren't walking out a noose and Clorox to find a, a gay black celebrity. Okay, so that right there tells you all you need to know. And if you'll notice, there was me, this fucking woman. She's my, a, a couple months older than me, less than a year older than me, and she's got kids at home, and she's now dead. Okay, imagine your mother being shot dead. One minute, your favorite team wins the Super Bowl. Okay, I'm a Giants fan. They won the Super Bowl. Okay, your favorite team wins the Super Bowl, the World Series, the Stanley Cup, the World Cup, whatever your sport is, whatever your championship game is, they win it. And your mom is there celebrating, and next thing you know, she's fucking dead. Imagine the horror that brings. I mean, your mom is dead, and she's dead because of a stupid reason. She died of cancer, she didn't die of a heart attack. She died because assholes couldn't behave themselves properly. Okay, whatever their fucking beef, I guarantee their fucking beef was, you know, your girl left me for you, or I have a bigger dick than your dick, or, 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 or you're wearing a better shirt than me, or, or I saw you on my turf last night, or, 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 or your gang has more money than my gang, or I guarantee, or you bumped into me in a nightclub last week, and I couldn't stay with you then, so I'm gonna get you now. I guarantee fucking to you a million percent no matter what this fucking shooting was about, it was about the stupidest fucking thing in the world. Every single one of these fucking shootings is stupid, okay? It's not about turf. It's not about, well, he's cutting into my racket or uh, uh, he's cutting into my loan shocking business or he ripped off the store that I wanted. No, it's about who bumped into me, whose girl left me for that guy, who this, that, and the other thing, who has a nicer shirt to me, Okay? And there was a thing on America's Most Wanted where a girl went to a party wearing a, a, a football jersey because it was a favorite player and his number reminded some gang member of a rival gang. Like, she's wearing that football jersey. Not because she's a fan of the, of the athlete, but because she must be a member of that gang from that street. You know, the 80, whatever, 87, 89, whatever. Whatever, whatever the gang number was. The gang had a number. And the jersey had the same number. So he calls up his boss. He says to his boss, yo, I'm going to kill this bitch. And they kidnapped her, threw her in the middle of nowhere, and fucking shot her to death because she wore a football jersey with the wrong number on it. Innocently. We assume you're a member of that gang, therefore we kill you. Okay? That's what this shit is always about. Okay? You can have a guy with a yellow t-shirt on. Oh, you're in that gang. Boom. Okay? You can have a guy with the wrong color bandana on. Oh, you're in that gang. Boom. Dead. Okay? That's what it is. It's always that shit. Okay? It's always that. And they're obviously not white. Let's be realistic. They're not white. Okay? Whatever color they are, the color is not white. Let's be realistic about that. Now, if one of these guys had on a fucking red hat with white letters on it, okay, it could have been a red hat that said, eat more potato chips. I mean, white lettering, Okay? And if he had a rifle with a pistol grip, and if he shot up a, a gathering of illegal immigrants or some shit, okay, he, he went to an illegal immigrant shelter in New York City with a rifle that had a pistol grip on it, and he had a red hat with white lettering, and the white lettering said, eat more potato chips, okay, and shot up a couple of illegal immigrants, okay? It would have been on the fucking news 24-7, okay, 24-7. Con look, at, look at Kyle Rittenhouse. Kyle Rittenhouse was a white kid with a rifle with a pistol grip on it, okay? He was attacked by thugs at a riot. He shot three and killed two of them, okay? Day after day, this evil kid killed this kid. He even had that, that cunt from uh, Full House, Jody Sweeten. She was rooting on the, on, on, the, on the guys to kill him. They said, kill him, rest in power, my brother, brother. Okay, look at Nicholas Sandman. He's got a mag hat on. He's standing with his friends in front of the Lincoln Memorial. Okay, and there's a a gang of older guys. They're basically a gang or a terrorist called the the Black Israelites, even though they're not Jewish. They're actually anti-Semitic. 
and they're behind the camera, you fucking white, you fucking school shooter, you fucking white motherfuckers. And the media took the video, muted out the, the, the black gang members, and look at these kids, let's punch them in the face. Okay, you had a Chiefs game. And a kid has on war paint, you know, the red and black war paint with the Chiefs hat on. Okay, he's, he's rooting on the, the team. They take his picture from this side. So you only see the black. Look at this little white supremacist. Look at this little motherfucker. This motherfucker hates black people. He must be a Trump supporter. Okay? But when there's a gang shooting where uh, some poor fucking woman who's 43 years old gets killed, her, mo her children have no mother now. Okay? Oh, my God. Dead silence. Dead silence. Okay? Because they cannot pin this on the Second Amendment. They cannot pin this on Donald Trump. They cannot pin this on Christians. Therefore, there is dead fucking silence. Okay? You literally hear nothing. Nothing. Even that, that bitch, um, uh, Tiffany Sepsis, Sepsis, she's filmed with Dale Harris from Halloween. Even that bitch posted a quote online from uh, Taylor's boyfriend, okay? We need more gun control to save innocent lives. The next fucking minute when they realize, oh my God, I can't pin this on white people. I can't pin this on conservatives. I can't pin this on the Constitution. It was gangbangers that were having a beef, okay? Oh my God, all of a sudden, that's it. Now, Missouri, to their credit, is not, is not fucking California, okay? These guys are going away. These guys are in jail. They're being with some serious shit. They're going away. But the media, look at the media, okay? And like I said, white guy, rifle, pistol grip, red hat, white lettering, eat more potatoes, going to, or eat more potato chips, going to illegal immigrant shelter, shooting a bunch of illegal aliens, problem. Other than white gang at a parade, 42 year old mother dead, silence. Silence. Okay? Because they cannot pin this on normal people. Likewise, if an illegal immigrant was doing shit, silence. Okay? We had... How many fucking crimes do illegal immigrants commit? Okay? There is silence. Okay? That's the world you live in. You live in a world where the media will only report the crime... If they can pin it on someone they don't like. If they can't pin it on someone they, they, they don't hate. Or if they can't use a narrative to enhance their political agenda. There is dead fucking silence. Because most gangs, at least today, are non-white. Years ago in the 50s, all the gang members were white. They all had the leather jacket on. They all had the switchblade in the back pocket. They rode the motorcycle. They beat the shit of with bricks and bats. And they knocked them around. Okay, they busted up with skulls. They fucked each other up real bad. Okay, but nowadays, gangs are mostly not white. Mostly. 99.9% .9 of them are in Democrat cities. Chicago, Detroit, LA. Okay, places where the Democrats have absolute control. And they are more than willing... To kill women, children, babies, old ladies. They don't give a fuck. And because of that, the media is silent. And it is disgusting. Thank you.